What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. And this is a very, very exciting video. We've got an exciting week coming up. Event number one of the Poker Go Cup. It's a $10,000 buy-in this entire week. Our $10,000 buy-ins against some really, really tough competition. Feeling pretty excited about just having to battle against like the top 1% of poker players um, that exist. So uh, this will be fun. They're pretty high variance tournaments that are all basically one day tournaments. So I'm not sure what this video is gonna be. Either it's got a summary of the whole week and we'll counter of a, a counter of how much money I've bought in for because things get expensive in tournament land. Uh, but I'm excited for this. I'm right outside the Pokegro studio right now. So event number one is starting right now. I'm also excited is that we get free food all week. So this might just be turned into a food vlog, but let's get into the poker. Let's buy in and hop in there. Starting things off hot here at event number one, we're in level one and we pick up eight on the button. There's a hijack raised to 2,500 and the cutoff makes the call in position here with eight. I feel like sometimes I'm incentivized to squeeze here, but with such a good hand and easy to play post flop, I decide to call. Well, this player in the small blind, Eric Seidel has other plans and he ends up squeezing to 17,000. And now when action folds all the way over to me, Obviously, knowing Eric is a very elite player, certainly going to be doing this light and squeezing because there's so much dead money in the middle. So I get to play in position against one of the legends in the game. Let's see a flop and I'm closing out the action. Well, we're off to a flop of Ace Queen 8. Bank City, no better way to start off this tournament series than, well, flopping bottom sets. My opponent continues with a bet of 15,000 and here certainly not going to raise. I want all his bluffs to continue, so happy to make the call. The turn comes a brick. Doesn't matter at all. I still have a set and it's a very strong hand. Eric takes his time and now decides to bet 50,000. This bet leaves himself with about another 50,000 behind and I take my time. Obviously, I think I know the best play is to just go all in. Eric's already committed a large percentage of his stack in the middle, so I don't think he's gonna be able to fold anything unless it's a complete air ball. So I announce all in after 25 seconds of thinking and he ends up Psy calling it off with Ace Jack. Got Eric drawing dead here and I'm going to seal up this win. Double up immediately. A very, very nice start into level one before two deals later. I pick up deuces in the cutoff. Under the gun opens it up to 3,000 and I'm not going anywhere. I call and the small blind calls. And guess who's surprised? The flop is king eight deuce to hearts. The ungun player continues with a bet of 3,500 once again with bottom set. Uh, life is just pretty nice right now. I decide to raise things up here right now to 13.5 thousand. Everyone is playing super deep here in level one, so I want to get as much money in the middle. And when my opponent makes the call, we've got a pot building here. Now we're going to the turn, which comes a 10. Board a little bit more connected, maybe some two pair combos or pair and flush bra combos out there. My opponent checks here and definitely going to continue betting and I want to size up where I can get it all in by the river. I decide to bet 32,000 and my opponent calls pretty quickly with about 70 to 80,000 behind. So we're going to play a big one here hoping to fade a heart river comes a six. Total brick once again. I've got to expect a set is the best hand here a large percentage of the time. When my opponent checks, you already know the deal. I'm announcing those two magical words, which are all in. And my opponent goes into the tank, uses multiple time banks. So he's thinking about it for over a minute, 30 seconds, and ends up folding, saying he had jack 10 of hearts ends up turning a pretty strong hand with a pair and flush draw now. And, uh, you know, couldn't get the call on the river, but still a very, very nice start to this tournament. Level two, we have great news. The food has arrived from Din Tai Fung and some boba. I mean, it's a great start to this tournament here with 2.5x starting stack and my food is on the way and lunch. Who can ask for more? Progressing to level four, we actually get involved in a pretty interesting spot. Pick a pocket forwards the hand in the small blind. There's a cutoff raise to 6,000, button makes the call, I call, big blind calls. So multi-way the flop comes 9-6 deuce rainbow and action ends up checking all the way around. When the turn comes a three of hearts, brings that back to our flush draw and I think it's a pretty weird spot right now. Considering we're multi-way and my hand double blocks the best hand right now, which would be a straight of 4-5. I decided to bet small 7,000 here. 
thinking that, I don't know, I can protect my pair against three other opponents, and sometimes I can rep a straight if the runout comes clean. I bet 7,000 here, and I get the big blind and button to call. So we've got some action, and we're going to the river, which is the four of hearts. Another very weird situation. I end up rivering a set, but there's a straight and a flush possibility available. So any fives a straight, two hearts would be a flush. I use my full 30 seconds here to decide what I want to do, and I arrived on a small bet for value. Get called by two pairs or something. I don't know. I think my hand is kind of borderline between, I don't know, I guess a bluff catcher or some sort of hand that I can bet for value. And it was about 13,000 here. I get the big blind to call relatively quickly. Other player folds, and I lose to 8-5 offsuit for a straight. He's going to take that one down. I think he had a double gutter, so can't blame him for calling. Just a very, very weird river decision. Next hand we're going to go over is a pretty fun one. Ace-5 of diamonds in the big blind. We get the cutoff, raising up the action to 6,000. Button here with the big stack, three bets to 13,000. And when the small line folds, well, we're in a doozy. I think these two positions are the widest positions to raise, as in the cutoff's going to be raising a lot, and the button will also be incentivized to squeeze and three bet a lot. So here we are. Ace five suited, very fun hand to play, and definitely one that you can mix in as a four bet. So I'm gonna go do that. I take the opportunity and raise it up to 45,000 here, trying to rep like I have aces or kings or something. When the cutoff folds and button makes the call, honestly, I just wanted to take it down pre-flop, but let's battle out of position here. Ace five suited we go, the flop comes nine, eight, six, two clubs and a diamond. So I have a very disguised straight draw along with the backdoor flush draw. On this board here, I'm going to bet with a little bit of equity here, I bet 30,000. And when my opponent makes the call for 30,000, the pot is building. And I have a whole lot of nothing so far. We're off to a turn, which is the King of Clubs. Very, very, very interesting card. The flush gets there, which may not be super relevant in these four bet pots. But I know that my opponent can't have ace king of clubs. And he might be very pocket pair heavy. So pocket pairs would certainly hate a king, an over card to their pair. And I'm going to try blasting again, repping like I might have ace king now because you know i could so i blast out fifty thousand, hoping that this bet is going to get it done and it does luckily this time he folds and nice to win uh, a pretty big pot after losing a few small ones all right we're progressing all the way to level six now in this tournament i pick up ace five suited once again but we're on the gun I open things up to twelve thousand here and i get fox into my right and the big blind to make the call Going to a flop of 9-4 deuce to spades, my opponent checks it over to me, and this is definitely a big bet or check situation, and considering I have a really strong hand, combo draw, nut flush draw, all of it, I bet big, 28,000 to go. And guess what? This big bet gets matched with a check raise. Check raising it up to 68,000. All right, Foxen, what are you doing here? I have a very strong hand, a very strong draw, and I'm in position. I'm going to continue here, but I'm definitely suspicious as to what hands he could be holding. I guess I'm just going to try to hit. He has about 240,000 behind, and we're off to a turn, which is the seven of diamonds. Now, Foxen starts off with a check, and I am so confused after this card peels off. Seems like he's going to have a lot of strong hands and hands that want to continue betting, but... Here, I have mixed feelings between wanting to check back or bet. My hand is ahead of smaller flush draws, I guess. And if I hit a spade, we could run into a cooler situation. So don't think there's that much merit to betting in this spot. I decided to check back and see a free, free river, which comes the 10. A red 10, I brick it all. And to make matters worse, my ace high is met with the all-in button of Foxen. All right, I'm out with this hand obviously cannot call with ace high and I lose a big one. My stack is down to 260,000 after missing my combo draw. You know what's a really good idea after losing a big pot to Fox and it's to play another pot versus him. I pick up king queen of diamonds this time once again under the gun, raise up to 16,000 and I get the button, Dan Cole poised to call and Fox in the big blind comes along as well. 
This time the flop comes pretty good. It's queen six four rainbow. So I actually have top pair, very strong hand on this board and action's going to check through as I'll check a lot of the time here. So we're gonna see a free turn, which is the nine of clubs. Brings in the backdoor flush draw and Foxen that decides to bet out here into the field for 28,000. And with my hand here, certainly can go either way with a raise or call. And knowing Foxen, obviously very capable of having bluffs in these spots, I decided to just make the call for now. Colpoise folds and we're going heads up to the river, which is the six of clubs. Backdoor flush draw gets there. I guess third pair became trips, but overall pretty good card for me. And not as good though when my opponent bets 78,000. Sizing way up here on this river when the backdoor flush gets there. I mean, how can I ever fold? I just can assume he's going to have a lot of bluffs a lot of the time. Not that much value. And on top of that, I have one of the better hands to call with, a really good bluff catcher. So I call, right? Stick it in there. Make the call for 78K and snap gets shown some bad news. He has jack deuce of clubs for a flush. Runner, runner gets there. Maybe I'm thinking back now that raising on the turn might have been the better play. But this is how this happened. And my stack went from going really, really well to crippled. But the very next deal, let's get involved. Because there's a cutoff raise and Foxen 3-bet in the small blind. And I have 20 big blinds left with ace-queen offsuit in the big blind. I mean, easy decision. Ace-queen offsuit for 20 big blinds. This is going to be an all-in given the configuration. I get the cutoff player to fold. But Foxen snaps with ace-king. <sighs> it's a Foxen kind of day. There was a sweat on the turn. I could have hit a spade to win. But no, in back-to-back-to-back hands... I just ship my entire stack to Foxen. So good luck to him on day two, I guess. This is GG's for me in event number one. All right, sometimes I guess Alex Foxen just like completely <laughs> you and takes your whole stack in three hands. That's it. Moving on to day two, I guess, because there's nothing else for me to do. All right, welcome to day two, event number two of the Poker Go Cup. Only thing I'm missing right now in my hand is some boba. I'm gonna go get that because that is included with the buy-in. Anyways, this is a buy number two, $20,000 now is in the total of buy-ins of this week. And um, yeah, to offer full transparency, I actually sold a little bit of action. Shout out to the people that bought action. I sold 20% of all the 10 and 15 Ks that I'll mainly be playing. So I have 80% of myself. So shout out to the people who did buy action. I wanted to, I just want to cash. I just want to produce some sort of return for the people that took a shot at me. So uh, we're gonna go do the, the playing of poker now and hopefully any highlights. Hopefully I don't punt it all to Fox in again. Let's, let's see how it goes. Let's first get the boba. Okay, now the tournament starts officially with boba. The first significant hand of this event, number two, we have a pretty tough table to start off, but four hours into the tournament, we're in level five with just under 200,000 in chips. I pick up kings in the big blind, a very, very good hand. The cutoff raises up to 9,000 off of a very short stack of 100,000. So about 25 big blinds and when action folds to me, I definitely want a three bet non all in here with such a premium hand. So I decide to size to 30,000. At this point for 30,000, my opponent tank calls. So pot is building and we're gonna see a flop of queen jack 10 rainbow. Not the best board overall for Kings, to be honest with you, but given the stack depth and given obviously I have a very strong draw and over pair, I guess we're going to be all in. So going to try to find a way to do that. I decide to bet out 12,000 really, really small bets. Just curious how my opponent is going to respond to this. And he comes through with a call. All right. Let's see a turn, which is the bank ace of diamonds, making things very, very easy for me now, sitting with the nuts, having a straight, and I'm just trying to somehow milk out some action. So I bet small once again. My opponent only has like 60,000 in a stack, and I bet 21,000. And at this point, once again, my opponent goes into the tank, and he ends up calling again. Gotta love that, and we're going to see a river, hoping it's a clean one. It is a queen. Oh, this is not good. Board is paired, and I don't know what to do. I feel like I lose to a lot of full houses, or I just chop a lot if I go all in. I can't really think of many hands that would call that I beat, unless it's some naked queen, but it seems realistically that any queen that my opponent would have would now have boated up. Ace-queen, queen-jack, queen-ten. 
all of those fun hands. Anyways, I decided to just go for it. I go all in because he only has 35,000 in the stack and my opponent tanks once again and I'm not going to save you all of that time waiting. He ends up calling. I show against Ace Jack. Nice to chip up big time here as the first significant pot that I played here in level two. Progressing on once again, I pick up King Jack offsuit in the big blind this time in level eight. Low Jack player, Anthony Hu, a good buddy of mine, who also a very good player here. He opens things up to 16,000 and I have an easy call. So we're gonna see a flop of queen eight, seven, two spades. I check it over to Anthony and he bets 15,000 and my hand seems to serve as a pretty decent check raise candidate. Sometimes I can do that since my hand wraps around a queen and I guess I have a spade to potentially bluff on. So this time I decide to check raise to 38,000 and well, I run into some resistance because my opponent calls and I don't love that. But what I do love is the turn king of spades. Oh boy, luck box into top pair along with the redraw to the flush. I take my time and think that the best strategy here is to just check because how often am I going to have a king? Not very often, I think. But here we are with the king. I check and my opponent checks back. We're going to the river now, which comes another king. Oh my God, stumbling into trips here. Pretty nice life, to be honest. I decided to bet big because I just don't know how many value hands I'm going to have. And obviously with trips, it's a very strong hand. So I make it 75,000 to go and I put my buddy into a pretty tough spot. He doesn't look happy with the bets and he's obviously not gonna raise. So I have the best hand for sure. I wanna get paid and he is a non-believer and calls. Nice to win this one, I show my hand. I don't end up knowing what he had, but I wouldn't be surprised if he had a queen and I sucked out. So here we are shipping up big time. Very next shuffle, have another opportunity to chip up. I pick up queens in the small blind. Big blind player is very short with 35,000 and Nick Petrangelo raises it up to 22,000. Awesome spot to have a premium here. Definitely going to be three betting and it would look very suspicious here like I'm trying to steal. So I three bet to 65,000. The short stack in the big blind ends up actually folding and now Nicky P goes into the tank and he does not fold. He <laughs> announces an all-in of 200,000 plus. Easy snap call, of course. And I see where it's a very, very good spot for me. He has pocket fives, 80% chance to win a monster pot and knock out one of the most elite players in this game. And I hold that 80% comes through and I have freaking piles now on break. Update guys, it's freaking dark out. This is a day two update. You haven't seen any hands, but you've been playing and I've been at the Poker Hero Studio for like six and a half hours now, it's 6.30. I guess all the interesting stuff happened recently because the first like eight levels for me really didn't really go much of anything. I didn't lose many chips and win that many chips, nothing interesting happened. And now I can report to you that I am here alive, 31 players left and it's dark. So um, yeah, fast forwarding some stuff. I have a lot of chips technically, above average stack and um, maybe 1.5X average. 31 players are left, 12 players pay out of the 80 three entrants. I have no idea how much is up top. I'm assuming somewhere between 160 to 180,000 maybe, if I were to guess. But, uh, you know, we're battling. Pretty tough table, of course. Nick, Nick Petrangelo is out there. Everyone's gonna be really good moving forward. And that's the update. Wish us luck. Trying to turn piles into more piles? I don't know what the right saying is, but this hand in level nine, blind versus blind, I pick up King Jack suited and Shannon Shore in the small blind decides to limp. With a premium, good hand to play. I raise it up to 35,000 and he makes the call and we see a flop of queen 10, eight rainbow with one spade. Over card, open-ended straight draw, lots of possibilities for my hand. And when he checks it over to me, certainly gonna bet this one and I bet 30,000 and he comes along for a call. The turn comes a bink nine. Who would have thought the sun run is going to keep continuing? My opponent checks and looking at his stack, he's got like, 340,000, so I am going to find a way to get it all in on the river, of course, now banking the best straight possible, best hand possible. So I size up to 100,000 here. This bet, if called, would leave 240,000 behind, and I've got a nice all in on the river here, and my opponent takes his time and ends up calling. So here we are with a massive pot brewing, and I have the nuts. We're off to a river, which comes another nine. Hmm, 
paired board now isn't the most comfortable spot to be in, but when I but when my opponent checks once again, we've got to pull the trigger here. I've got King Jack, the nut straight. If he has a full house, then he deserves all my chips. I announce all in and he snaps it off with Jack nine. Sorry, man. King Jack is going to win this one with the higher straights, a massive mega cooler, and I'm just happy to be on the right side of it. So yeah, I just turned piles into a complete mansion of chips. Might be chip leading this entire tournament right now with over 900,000 in front of me. So after this massive pot, I end up actually losing every single pot I enter for the next three levels. But good news, we're in the money. There's a clip here. We see a monster pot happens with 14 players left on the stone bubble. The flush will be two pair in this massive pot and the bubble has bursted all of a sudden in the money with about 20 big blinds. <laughs> in the freaking money. You guys weren't able to really see the torching of chips that I unfortunately had to go through, but I uh, played for like two hours. I entered a lot of pots, uh, not a lot, but like a handful, like at least 10 pots. I lost every single freaking one. So shout out to Andrew Moreno. Not very friendly, he was bullying me. And uh, yeah, I just, I just, I just, I just couldn't, I didn't have it. I didn't have anything. I raise, three bet shove, raise, three bet, whatever. It doesn't matter, uh, cause I had a million, I have, 550k 500k but we're in the money locked up in cash which is what matters so um nice to fold my way into that locked up 16,000. so uh shout out to the people who purchased a little bit of action here on today's first bullet of event number two in the money hath pizza returns some sort of a profit anyways it's gonna it's a late night we're gonna play until the final six and which is luck probably been a very long video so i'm gonna stop talking and let's just get back into the poker where i can hopefully win an all-in or two one of the first hands coming back from the break, I pick up queens in the small blind. What a premium. Cutoff player Seth Davies opens up the action to 55,000. And with 20 big blinds, I'm certainly not going to be all in with this strong of a hand. So I three bet to 170,000 here, hoping to milk in some action. And when Seth does make the call, we get to see a flop with a low stack to pot ratio. And the flop is 4-4 deuce rainbow. I have about less than the pot size bet behind on a very, very safe flop in this three bet pot. I'm going to go small here, 75,000 to go, getting, I guess, ace highs, pocket pairs, anything under the sun to float here with such a small bet. And he does make the call for 75,000. So with about 250,000 left in my stack, we're off to a turn, which is the three of diamonds. Brings in a backdoor flush draw, brings in some sort of straight draw for any ace, and let's get it in. Hoping that he might call off with an over pair, maybe a draw. Who knows, but I could certainly be doing this with ace high as well. So I shove and he snap folds. Although I don't get a full double up, this was a very crucial spot to chip up, almost at 800,000 now. Looking to build once again it's against the same opponent. I have pocket fives in the hijack. I open things up to 50,000 and I get the big blind Seth to make the call. We're off to a flop of 10-4-4 rainbow. Overall, pretty safe board for pocket fives. My opponent checks it over to me and I'm certainly going to be betting, just trying to protect my pair from over cards and you know, getting a fold from like eight, nine would be perfect to be honest. Anyways, I make it 40,000 to go, but my opponent makes the call again. All right, we're going to a turn which comes another four. My opponent checks once again, and I have a decision point to either bet big or check. With a full house, once again, I think there's merit to doing both options, and I don't think that I'm picking a wrong option if I bet or check, so I decided to bet medium. I decided to go around half pot to 110,000 here. Once again, I could you know, just protect against king, queen, ace highs, all that fun stuff. And when my opponent calls again, now some sort of alarm bells that maybe pocket fives isn't the winner. We're off to a river which comes in ace, a pretty disastrous card as, you know, ace highs were one of the few hands that I actually beat. And action's quickly going to go check, check. And my opponent shows jack 10 for a 10 on the flop, full house on the turn. That boat is bigger than mine. Reporting at... 11 p.m. ish currently at the final table uh we're not playing here yet this is for the live stream so there's eight players left six players until day two where we play on the live stream i have 20 big blinds i'm probably the shortest stack or the second shortest stack still 20s like plenty to a certain degree 200k up top and i guess i need some ships but yeah there's eight left locked up 33,000, and just need to win it all in here at the final table 
I'm a little card dead with eight left, but we see a pretty big pot here. Pocket sevens goes all in against ace, deuce. Set of sevens is going to win, and we get the first knockout of the final table. Although I am on a very, very short stack, about 400,000, I managed to find a ladder here in this final table, and there's seven players left. Until this hand, pocket sixes with about 305,000 chips. Unfortunately, like I said, I've been folding throughout this final table and very, very card dead. So I've got seven big blinds and a dream. I'm all in. The chip leader in the big blind, though, wakes up with a good enough hand to call. He has king 10 of diamonds and flops the world. Combo draw, straight draw, flush draw, over cards, pair draws. I'm not looking in great shape here, but find a turn brick, but river nine to give my opponent a straight. And just like that, that's going to be GG's for me, sadly. I'm out in seventh place. The rest of the final six will move on to play at the final table live stream the very next day. All right, there it is. No, uh, no final table stream for me, unfortunately. But that wraps up day two. It is almost 1 a.m. here. And I'll be playing again tomorrow at noon. So I'm going to wrap up this video. It's been a long one. Thanks for watching. Almost made a deep run. Oh, well, it happens. Uh, just, just literally car dead and blinded all the way down to no big blinds. And when you see a pair, it's pretty good and lost the flip. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video potentially for more uh, Poker Go, Poker Go Cup stuff, but hashed out in seventh place for 41.5. Not so bad. Shout out to all the people who did buy a little piece of action. You guys made some money too. So appreciate you guys tuning in. More tournament videos to come for sure. Always love playing here. And uh, thanks for the support in real time. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.